Good day, everyone! Welcome to our science adventure. This is Teacher Arvin sharing you about the basic unit of life, which is the cell, and how cell in our body divides and replicate itself. This topic focuses on the competency, compare mitosis and meiosis, and their role in the cell division cycle. To start with our journey, let us recall the important cell organelles needed to carry out the cell processes. These are the cell membrane, which surrounds the cell organelles. The nucleus, which contains our DNA, where cell undergo cell division. And the cytoplasm, for the cell to move. These important organelles are needed to carry out the cell cycle. For today's objectives, number one, explain the phases of the cell cycle. Two, identify the stages of mitosis and meiosis. Three, compare the difference between mitosis and meiosis. And number four, appreciate the importance of cell division to living organisms. Are you now ready? Let's start this adventure. Come on, let's dive in. Have you ever wondered, when you look at your parents, you can see features that you share with them? The sharing of physical attributes can be explained by heredity, where traits are passed on from parents to offspring. When you look at your siblings, each one of you is unique based on the combination of traits you acquired from your parents. That is known as variation, which demonstrates differences among individuals. Do you still remember your appearance as a child? Say, when you were 4 or 5 years old? We change a lot as we grow up. Why do you think did this happen? What enables us to grow? Cellular reproduction is what makes our body grow and develop. Every living thing undergoes reproduction. The nutrients taken by an individual will provide energy for metabolic processes for growth and development, as well as reproduction in the form of cell division, which provides for the backdrop for the organismal level of reproduction. Do you know what cell cycle is? A cell cycle is a series of events that take place in a cell as it grows and divides. It is the process where the cell undertakes to replicate all of its genetic materials then divide into two identical cells. So let us look at the different stages of the cell cycle and what happens in each stage. There is a four-stage process in the cell cycle consisting of GAP1 phase or the G1 phase, the synthesis phase or the S phase, the GAP2 phase or the G2 phase, and mitosis, which cell undergoes as it grows and divides. After completing the cell cycle, the cell either starts the process again for GAP1 or exits the cycle through GAP0. From GAP0, the cell can undergo terminal differentiation. Let us elaborate each of the four stages of the cell cycle. Let us begin with the GAP1 phase. What do we expect for the cell to do in this phase? Yes! Correct. The cell in this stage increases in size and cellular contents are duplicated. The next phase is the synthesis phase, where DNA replicates each of the 46 chromosomes in humans or 23 pairs is replicated by the cell. For the next phase, the GAP2 cell grows more and the proteins are synthesized in preparation for cell division. It is followed by the last phase, which is the mitosis phase. In this phase, there is the formation of two identical daughter cells and mitosis is followed by cytokinesis where the cytoplasm divides. While some cells are constantly dividing, they exit GAP1, enter a resting state called GAP0 where a cell is performing its function without actively preparing the divide. 
Alternating with interphase is the cell division phase or the M phase. In eukaryotic cells, there are two types of cell division. The mitosis for body cells or somatic cells and meiosis for sex cells. In mitosis, this type of cell division produces two identical cells with the same number of chromosomes. While meiosis is a special type of cell division where the cell undergoes two rounds of cell division to produce four daughter cells. Each with half the chromosome number as the original parent cell and with a unique set of genetic material as a result of exchange of chromosome segments during the process of crossing over. Let's find out more what the stages of cell division are. Mitosis is divided into four stages. Stage 1 is the prophase. Stage 2 is the metaphase. Stage 3 is the anaphase. And stage 4 is the telophase. In prophase stage, the nuclear membrane and nucleus may still be present. The chromosomes are thicker and shorter because of repeated coiling. At this stage, each chromosome is made up of two identical sister chromatids as a consequence of replication of DNA during the synthesis phase. In metaphase stage, the nuclear membrane has disappeared while the highly coiled chromosomes align at the metaphase plane, an imaginary plane equidistant between the cell's two poles. Spindle fibers are also formed. Each fiber binds to a protein called the kinetophore at the centromere of each sister chromatid of the chromosome. In anaphase stage, the paired centromeres of each chromosome separate towards the opposite poles of the cells as they are pulled by the spindle fibers through their kinetophores. This liberates the sister chromatids. Each chromatid is now regarded as a full-fledged chromosome and is only made up of sister chromatid. And the last stage, which is the telophase stage. The chromosomes are now at the opposite poles of the spindle. They start to uncoil and become indistinct under the light microscope. A new nuclear membrane forms around them while the spindle fibers disappear. Cytokinesis or the division of the cytoplasm occurs to form two separate daughter cells immediately after mitosis. Now, we understand the stages of mitosis. Let's move on to the second type of cell division, the meiosis, where the cell undergoes two rounds of cell division to produce four daughter cells. Let's simplify the explanation of meiosis. Meiosis undergoes two stages of cell division, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 has the same process with mitosis with the stages of prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase 1, and telophase 1. Meiosis 1 produces two daughter cells. However, instead of sister chromatids, Meiosis 1 occurs with homologous chromosomes and crossing over. Meiosis 1 is the first round of cell division in which the goal is to separate homologous pairs of chromosomes and to reduce the diploid cells to haploid cells. The cell produced are known as sex cells or gametes or the sperm and egg cell. Meiotic prophase 1 is subdivided into five stages namely leptotin, zygotin, pachytin, diplotin, and diakinesis. In leptotin, chromosomes uncoil and become thread-like structure. In zygotin, synapses between homologous chromosomes begin. In pachytin, the paired chromosomes known as homologous chromosomes are condensed and appear fat. In diplotin, the chromosomes pair begin to separate and form the basis for evolutionary diversity. And in diakinesis, chromosomes condense, 
the nucleus fragments and nuclear envelopes disperse. In metaphase 1, the synapse homologous chromosomes now align at the center. Homologous chromosomes begin to separate randomly to the opposite poles of the cells during anaphase 1. In telophase 1, the cell now undergoes a process called cytokinesis that divides the cytoplasm of the original cell into two daughter cells. Each daughter cell is haploid and has only one set of chromosomes or half the total number of chromosomes of the original cell. After the meiosis 1, two daughter cells proceed to meiosis 2 with the following stages. Prophase 2, where a new spindle fiber forms around the chromosomes. Next, we have the metaphase 2, where the chromosomes line up at the equator. The anaphase 2, where centromeres divide and the chromatids move to the opposite poles of the cells. Telophase 2 follows, where the nuclear envelope forms around each set of chromosomes and cytoplasm divides in the process of cytokinesis. After the whole process of meiosis, after the whole process of meiosis, four haploid cells are produced which are unique to sex cells for reproduction. A haploid daughter cell contains half the number of chromosomes of the parent cell. Now that we understand the stages of cell cycle and cell division, let us compare mitosis and meiosis. Let us start with their similarities. Both mitosis and meiosis produce new cells. They both follow similar basic steps and start with a single parent cell. For their differences, mitosis follow four stages in total plus interface, while meiosis follow eight stages in total plus interface. Mitosis happens in somatic cells, while meiosis happens in germ cells. The purpose of mitosis is for cellular proliferation, while meiosis is for sexual reproduction. Mitosis produces two diploid daughter cells, while meiosis produces four haploid daughter cells. Chromosome number remains the same in mitosis, while chromosome number is half in each daughter cell in meiosis. Lastly, genetic variation doesn't occur in mitosis, while genetic variation is increased in meiosis. Pairing of homologous chromosomes occurs only in meiosis. In mitosis, the daughter cells produced are always identical in terms of genetic materials, while meiosis results to variation because of crossing over. Cell division plays an important role in all living organisms, as this is essential for growth, repair, and reproduction. This process helps in renewing damaged cells. To check your understanding of this topic, I'm going to show you pictures and relate them to the topic. Are you ready? What do you observe in this picture? Exactly! The picture shows the process of wound healing. This involves mitosis, especially on repair of worn out tissues. What about the next picture? Correct! The snake undergoes the process of molting and this involves repair and replacement. How about the third picture? You got it right! The picture shows the process of regeneration of tail of lizard, which is also reproduction of somatic cells for repair. What do you notice in this picture? The growth is a result of mitosis. How about the next picture? Correct! The picture shows the development from zygote to embryo. And the last picture. The picture shows the germination process of beans which indicates growth and development as a result of cell division. All of these are a result of mitotic cell division. So have you learned something today? 
I hope this lesson helped you understand the process of cell division. Thank you and see you in our next video lesson. Bye-bye!